Hello and welcome to the Pro Tips or Sports Betting Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Pro Tips or Sports Betting Podcast. Pro Tipster Paddy here today. I'll be joined later on by Pro Tipster Dan and we're going to be taking a look back at this weekend's football action from the UK and Europe as well. And Dan is also going to speak later on about some baseball. We'll have some tennis as well. We'll have some uh, NBA, basketball and NHL ice hockey as well. So it's just a duo today. You have myself, Pro Tipster Paddy, and Pro Tipster Dan, and we're going to give you a run through some of our football tips. We'll have a chat about what went on the weekend as well, and this week's Champions League, and we'll have some action from tennis. Uh, we'll have basketball, we'll have ice hockey, and Dan's going to step up to the plate, literally, and give, well, not literally, obviously, and give us some uh, baseball news as well. He's our baseball expert, Pro Tipster Towers. Hello, Dan. Hi, Paddy. Are you well? I know how it is. Different day, same crap. <laughs> I know exactly. All that varies is the depth, as oh. my dad would say. <laughs> that's, that's dead true, Dan. Absolutely. Right, look, man. Uh, what did you watch over the weekend? Um, okay, so I watched Man City versus Chelsea. That was some great uh, pressing, wasn't it? <laughs> I was going to... It's the second time I've, done Man, I've seen Man City do this. They've slowed down the game so far... Where they're actually standing still and yeah. the other team, and you know what it is? I figured it out. Chelsea weren't pushing on to them because Chelsea knew the second they made a mistake in trying to tackle them, there would be a gap open up and there'd be one, a further goal down. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It was as simple as that. It was yeah. like, nah, you can have the ball. Honestly, That's, we're not going to try. Were you listening to the Sky or the watching the Sky coverage? <clears throat> I was, yeah. Yeah, because Gary Neville was going mad about this. He was saying, why are Chelsea always, why are they not um, getting the ball forward? It's always coming out from the back. And it, it, it's bloody obvious why it's coming out from the back. Because they know if they have the ball, they'll, they'll make less mistakes. Or they think they'll make less yeah. mistakes. So they want to keep the ball, keep possession, keep possession. But, yeah, there was no real penetration at all. They had a couple of chances, but, ah, you know. Well, one of the other things they talked about was uh, playing Eden Hazard up front, yeah. and the fact that it just doesn't work. Yeah. There's no focal point, and I know Morata's having a poor time with it, but Giroud's a good player. Yep. And I'm not big. I, I don't ascribe to this false nine stuff, so I'm not a fan. Not a fan at all. Yeah, well, I, I'm uh, not big on Pedro. I don't know why Pedro's getting a game because he's not having a good season either. No, he's, he's, he's not he's not good enough for Chelsea, no, I don't think. No, no, no. I, look, when he came in at the start, I thought he was very good, but I don't know, maybe he doesn't like living there or or something's going on behind the scenes because he's not, he's not and, and, and he's getting away with not playing well because uh, it's so obvious that Morata's not playing well, you know? Yeah. I, I, I also watched uh, Brighton against Arsenal. That was uh, interesting, wasn't it? Well, I, I backed uh, Brighton, to, uh, Brighton to either win or draw. So um, I was expecting Arsenal not to get much out of it. Now, what did and, you get um, them as? I, I actually had Brighton on the handicap, uh, plus plus a half. What what did you have them? I have uh, plus a half as well, 1.78, something like that. Great yeah. minds think like that. You see, I wish I'd gone for Brighton to win, though, because I'd been tempted <laughs> by it. I'd been tempted, but I thought, eh, no, no, no. Yeah. Arsenal aren't that bad, but they are. Yeah, they just they are. They certainly were. Um, you know, defensively poor again. Um, and... They just didn't have the um, the wherewithal to break to break down Brighton, and um, they're playing the Europa League this week, and they've got no Aubameyang. Um, Lacazette's still injured, so they, they're, they're down to like well well better than Ketia. Yeah, yeah. ouch. And I, it's not going to work. No, I don't think so either. Um, what should poor uh, Martin Martin isn't isn't with us today? He had to had to go away at the last minute. Um, I I did want to give him some some slagging about losing four <coughs> one to Swansea. Though. That was an awful loss. Yeah, West Ham are in um, deep doo doo, I think. Um, Swansea, though, Carlos Carvalho, what a manager. <laughs> what a manager. Um, I don't know what he's done um, to Swansea. I don't know what specifically he's done, but he's certainly got them believing again, hasn't he? And um, was it five wins in nine games or something like that it's for Swansea now? It? It's very good, like. It's great. He's, he's a brilliant, he's, he's a great character as well. Well, that, that's the thing. He's a likable guy as well. When he talks, you, mm. you, you instinctively like him. He's not one of these. Um, like you see some managers and they're like, they talk at press conferences and they're either moody asses or they're just like non-committal and Carvalho, you know, good value for money. Yeah. I, I'd imagine if you're a journo covering Swansea, you're loving life at the moment. <laughs> you know, you've got Probably. Eligible, quotable quote every presser. So you've got your, you got your line sorted like 
that, you know. I wonder what is it about him though, because I looked up, <laughs> I looked up his record when he got this this gig. Not not when he got the Sheffield Wednesday one. But when he got this, and he doesn't tend to stay in clubs very long. Around around ten months is what he averages, and I wonder. I wonder, does he end up annoying the press? Because that's something that the English media haven't picked up on yet with, say, Klopp. Klopp in Germany wasn't nearly as popular as what we think he was, especially coming towards the end. People were fed up with his, uh, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? His, not his, his character. He wouldn't, his what? His character, his... Um, yeah, I wouldn't say his, his character, his kind of just way of going on and stuff, you know, and people were like, this is wearing thin because he's not winning and he's just... I see, I, 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 think, I think it's a massive failing. Um, we are talking about Brighton against Arsenal. Brighton's manager, Chris Hewton, is like, he, ex Birmingham City manager, he's a really good manager. He's, he's a classic man- as well, isn't he? He's a classy guy. Yeah. Favourite manager of the last 10 years, but... He's um, in interviews. He's the most anodyne manager going because he's got this politician's habit. You'll yeah. ask him a question, and he'll repeat the question back to you, and then answer what he thinks the question is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. so like I'm being careful here of what I'm saying. I want to make sure that I'm not misquoted. And whilst it means that you know he's, he's flat back and everything, it just makes him really anodyne as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think the game lacks. Sometimes we're um, we're a bit too quick to criticise. You know, sometimes you need a bit of um. You need a bit, you know, like like Jose Mourinho, you know, you need a bit of that in the game. Oh, definitely. Oh, look, Dan, I'm all for, you know, WWE style <laughs> managers in the future where they come out and just like, just go mental. That'd be awesome. If they just tried it for a week or two uh, before we all got bored of it. <laughs> yeah, the sad thing is we would get bored of it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I speak it. from experience again. <laughs> um, uh, Southampton, uh, they're in big trouble. Nil-nil, couldn't even score against Stoke who are equally as bad if not worse yeah um, Southampton fans have been, haven't been have been happy with uh, Pellegrini Pellegrino I can never get his name right with, with that guy anyway they, they, they've, um, they've not been happy they, they, they don't look like scoring you know they've, so many of their players have just gone off the boil um, you like the sign Gabbiadini last year and he looked awesome he's just fallen to pieces um, and I don't know what it is because they've got some good players but but, you know, the thing is this year, if you look at the Premier League table, there's quite a few teams who could be in trouble. Mm. I mean, I think I think we can pretty much say now West Bromwich Albion are going down. Yeah. Um, and West, Al- West Bromwich Albion fans that I know would agree with that and would be, yeah, if we're going down, we deserve to. Um, Pardew's crap. Pulis was crap. So, fair enough. But... Above them, you've got, what, Stoke, Palace, Southampton, Newcastle, Huddersfield, West Ham, Swansea, all within three points of each other, so that's all the way up to 13th. I'd say at the moment, uh, everyone south of, um, I don't know, may- maybe Everton are realistically in trouble. May- maybe even maybe even as high. I mean, Burnley have got 40 points, so they should be okay. But like, if Everton like lost every game to the end of the season, you could see him going down. <laughs> oh, this is how, how tight it is yeah, at yeah, the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think, though? Like, I'd say I'll put my neck out. I'd say West Brom, Stoke, and Southampton. Um, West Brom, Stoke, and Newcastle. Newcastle. Ooh, you reckon? I think I think Although Newcastle's I think West, home I think West, West Ham could go as well. Sorry, Martin, but I think they could. I think Newcastle's home form will get them through. I think that's that's what's going to keep them up. Mm. Um, the rest, no, I think Southampton. It's a weird one. They've they've lots of good players, but Southampton have drawn too many games. Yeah. I think they've drawn more games than any other team in the Premier League. And, and they're they're going uh, they're going to regret not pulling not pulling the trigger on him. <coughs> they really should have fired him there before the the, the winter window. Mm. Um, what has happened the weekend? I was watching. Um, Roma, Napoli, what was the score? Two, uh, two fours, a big shock. Uh, everyone thought Napoli were going to come out and, and, and destroy Roma because Roma had taken a bit of a bit of a wobble. They had a couple of okay results after the winter break, but mm. not great. But uh, Napoli, yeah, man, I was watching it. I was really surprised. Roma, <coughs> Roma, they were really good. Came out of blocks really quick. They defended really well as well. And Napoli didn't expect it, and then of course all the other matches were were called off in, in all across Italy because of uh, yeah, because of a story. Yeah, David Astori's death. It's awful. Just poor fella dying in his sleep. Mm. You know, well, thirty months, no age. Yeah, I wonder what, what it's probably what they call a sudden sads, isn't it? Sudden adult death. 
Uh, so, I have no idea. So, no idea. Oh, it's just awful. But it, I mean, it, 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 what was what's most shocking for me is just that, like, the medical team never spotted anything. That, that's so weird. If it's something that 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 you know, it's something that that should have come up in some kind of heart monitoring thing or brain scans or it's, it's all yeah. awful shocking. But anyway, um, I am um, actually talking on this. Uh, I read earlier um, one of the Fiorentina players came uh, wrote an Instagram post. Mm-hmm. Um, hang on, I, I, I've got to read. I've got to read some of this. Yeah. Um, it's tweeted earlier. So Ricardo Saponara uh, made an, a tribute to a story on Instagram. This is translated from Italian to English. My my Italian is like non-existent. This is relying on what's been tweeted. So um, it says, "Oh, captain, my captain, why did you not come down to have breakfast with us all? Why did you not pick up your shoes from outside of Marco's room and then drink our own juice as usual? Now they'll tell us that life goes on, that we must look forward and pick ourselves up. But what will your absence taste like?" He will arrive every morning in the cafeteria, warming up everyone with his smile. He goes on for a little while. Um, a guy called Federico Manas mm. has tweeted it, at Federico Manas, M-A-N-A-S-S-E. Um, read it. It is beautiful. Yeah. It's really, really beautiful. And I, I didn't know who the story was, but, you know, I, I saw Antonio Conte getting cut up about it. I saw quite a few people getting cut up about it. So he clearly, you know, was yeah. a player that was really well liked and apparently he'd um he was due to sign a new contract with Fiorentino had been put off because of uh, bad weather yeah that's right he was due to sign it, like, the day after he died yeah, or something today, like that today because he was supposed to record and sign it today yeah, yeah it's awful and it was I mean one of the bad things for the team is that they, they'll have to play next weekend you know and they're not going right. to be ready to play it's going to be like Dortmund last year after you know someone tried to bomb their bus that uh, completely wrecked the squad for the, for, for the year and it'll be the same now with Fiorentina. They're, they're not going to have their heads together at all until <coughs> next season. It's I don't know. I think they should, the, the league really should give them a, a buy or something, you know. But anyway, um, what else happened over the weekend? Uh, we spoke about City Chelsea. Barca won against Atletico. I was half watching that. Um, boring. It was kind of boring. <laughs> See. I'm, I'm not. I'm like you, but I know you hate La Liga, Dan. I, I don't hate it. I, I, but what I really don't like about La Liga is that it's the league with the most play acting, diving, and uh, mm. and cheating. I think, I think that's why I don't like it. And uh, I'm going to sound like such a hipster here, but um, the whole Messi Ronaldo thing as well. I really don't care. Yeah. <laughs> like I saw today, Messi's got like 600 goals, and I'm like, so yeah. what? You know, if if I have the the protection from the refs that he gets in La Liga, and he does get it, oh yeah, then yeah, ridiculous. You know, can he can he do it on a wet Tuesday night in Stoke? That's my question. <laughs> hey, but sure, Dan Stoke can't do it on a wet Tuesday night in Stoke. <laughs> you had that stat a few months ago, didn't you? Yeah, I came up with a player <laughs> that could most do it on a wet Tuesday night in Stoke. It's Cameron Jerome, as I recall. <laughs> I was watching. Well, listen, I watched ice hockey there as well, Dan, uh, yesterday. My, my poor missus is going mad. I watch sport all weekend because the young lad is sick at home, so we can't leave the house. Mm. It was just football and, and ice hockey all weekend. I watched the Florida Panthers. Uh, they beat the Philadelphia Flyers 4-1. That was a good one. Uh, overs didn't come in. A lot of people had backed overs on our website for that, so they'll be a bit annoyed. But it, it was 3-0 by the end of the first period and you know yourself if you score that many you're just going to sit back and then mm. the other good one New Jersey Devils uh, they lost to the Vegas uh, Golden Knights also overs didn't come in uh, you know, the Vegas Golden Knights man have you been following them what they've been doing no I know they're a new franchise and I know they're kicking ass yeah, but I've amazing. heard they're quite quite controversial as well from what I've heard uh, well why what have you heard um, I just heard that. I just see loads of people moaning about them. I don't specifically know why. But I just yeah. see people moaning. I suppose it's kind of a you know Red Bull Salzburg kind of thing. People don't like new teams, but you know, I mean, it, what's weird for me in NHL is that you have teams like Dallas who have an ice hockey team, or Florida have an ice hockey team. Like, I'm sorry, but if you live in the desert, you shouldn't really have an ice rink. There's no reason for you to have an ice rink in your city mm. if you live in the desert. You know what? That's mad for me. But all right, if you want to have it, just suppose. Who am I to stop you? And they're great to watch. I really like watching the, the Vegas Golden Knights. And sure, more power to them. They're getting lots of people in to see them. I wonder how long will it last, though, because they could come. They could, they could become kind of a uh, tourist team, like the Anaheim Ducks are down in um, 
Disneyland, you know, Disney World, whichever one it is. Yeah. So you could almost make the argument that Chelsea are a bit of a tourist team as well, because if if you look at the stands during their games, during the the coverage, the television coverage, half it's tourists now, you know. Yeah, um, I've, I've been to Stamford Bridge twice, and um, <laughs> it's it's not the best experience. Uh, the last time I went was actually some time ago. I was back in two thousand and three. And um, I was going to America the next day, and I, it was like around the time of my birthday, I went to see Birmingham City against Chelsea. It finished 0-0. Um, Olivier Tebele saved one off the line with, like, his, his, like, his boot half, his, half off his foot. <laughs> but I was, there, I was there with my uh, my wife at the time, and it was just, it was just an eerie experience. It didn't feel like a football game at all. Yeah. And we were staying in Chelsea Hotel, which backs onto one of the stands, yeah. which is even weirder. That's weird. That is weird, yeah. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. All right, well, look, Dan, let's get on to, uh, let's get on to your tips, man. Uh, so you want to talk about your team, Birmingham City, taking on Middlesbrough. Look, God damn, we haven't mentioned the managerial situation. You had loads of, uh, loads of people on your own uh, Facebook channel the other night. Yeah, um, so it was the worst kept secret in football, but um, on Friday I posted on my own, uh, as a Birmingham City fan, I run a, a fan page, and um, I posted that Steve Cottrell was going to get sacked and that we were going to hire Gary Monk, and everyone's like, how the hell have you known? Come Saturday night, we lose to Forest, and we sack Steve Cottrell, and Sunday night we hire Gary Monk. Um, it was the worst kept... I, I think I showed you something about it on Thursday, <laughs> if I remember right, yeah, though. Because yeah, yeah. um, I tried to put money on it, and I was too slow. Because <clears throat> the market was suspended, like if you remember, yeah. um, it, I, I kind of feel sorry for Cartrell because um, it must have been hard. He knew, I'm pretty sure he knew that he would he'd, he was going to get the sack, and you know he'd had to um, take take charge of the game on Saturday, so he got his payoff. And you know, I'd, I'd heard rumours they'd had to clear out all his stuff from the, uh, excuse me, all, uh, clear out all his stuff from the uh, training ground and on the Friday, so it kind of been pleasant. I mean, half a million in skyrocket probably eases the pain somewhat, but... <laughs> it was still, um, still humiliating. Yeah. I, I, it's funny, we, we were talking about anodyne managers and people getting fed up of, um, like, managers' character. Steve Cottrell was the David Brent of managerial. <laughs> um, sometimes you come out with stuff that was really, really um, insightful, and, you know, I thought, fair, fair play to him, you know, I actually agree with a lot of what he's saying. Sometimes he just sounded like David Brent. It's oh, come on, shut up. <laughs> um, we've now hired Gary Monk, who is younger than I am, which has annoyed me greatly. <laughs> um, it's going to keep happening now, Dan. <laughs> I know, it's sickening. So we've hired Gary Monk, and um, essentially looking at him, he's going to be like Gary Ray, part two. Strong, organized team, four, two, three, one. Not um, consistent tactics, all about organisation, all about getting the most out of limited players, which, to be honest, with 11 games left this season, is exactly what we need. And we're up against Borough, who, um, if you remember at the start of the season, that's who he was manager of. Mm. And the Borough fans don't like him. The Borough fans thought he was um, poor. Um, and to be honest, he didn't have the same success of Borough he had at Leeds, but I think one of the main reasons for that was um, he didn't have his assistant at Leeds, Borough, Pep Clote, and he's got him now at Birmingham City. Pep Clote has come with him as his um, former England striker, how, James BT. How, how come he didn't go with him to Middlesbrough? Because he went to Oxford to be their manager. And he got sacked fairly quickly. Oh, he, um, it didn't work out. Fair enough. So Monk's come in. He's doing his press conference right now um, as, as, we, as we record this. So um, I'm going to have to catch up on that. But, you know, 11 games left. He's, he's basically his first remit is keep us up. Yeah. And we played Borough, who... Um, are seventh in the table, two points behind Bristol City, who smashed Leeds United 3 0 on Friday. Patrick Bamford got a hat trick. And um, Tony Pulis, fair play to him. I know the Albion fans hate him, but Tony Pulis has got Borough set up well. They play this nice 4 5 1 formation, um, where they've got uh, Adama Traore and Stuart Downing wide, Johnny Housen and, oh god, I've forgotten his name. Um, Johnny Housen and another midfielder whose name I can't quite remember, either side of Grant Ledbetter, who is the pivot, and Patrick Bamford up front, and it's working. It's really working for them. 
and they play us, and we've been dis- we're just imbalanced and disorganised, and we we get like, like against Forest, we get we get a chance, we miss it early on, heads drop, we concede every game. So the first thing that that Monk needs to do for Birmingham City, if they're going to do anything, is to organise them so that that their heads don't drop, and so that when they get a chance, they actually take it. But we did score our first goal in five games on Saturday. We scored our first goal from a corner this season on Oof. Saturday. Oof. And our first goal from a defender this season on Saturday. So maybe things are going to look up. This is hardly head time here. But um, I know when I looked this morning, Birmingham City were about 4.08 to win. I don't think we'll win. But on the 0.5 handicap, Birmingham City to win or draw... I'm tempted. And the reason I'm tempted is because Middlesbrough are vulnerable. Um, I don't know if you remember a couple of weeks ago, they played Sunderland in the time where's Derby. That's right. They went, it was 3 0 up at yeah. half time or a while away. Three odd. And then they crumbled and, and drew 3 3. And this is the thing. If Monk can keep that team, get it all, like, organized so that we've got, um, you know, players in the right positions that believe they can do what they're asked to do, we might get something out of it. And the other thing that's going to help, the last home game we played was toxic. The uh, the fans were, um, well, Steve Carson had to have a police escort off the pitch. He was that bad. So the fans are glad to see the back of him, and they're glad to see Monkin. So obviously that ground swell of happiness, and it, it, it's going to be good for the team, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. So, Actually, Dan, I was looking up. I, I I was putting the odds together as well. I always do for this. And uh, you said you said Birmingham were four ten. It's after coming down nearly twenty points then, because they're three point nine three when I checked them. Yeah, that means there's a bit of money coming in. Yeah, for yeah, it. there's a lot of money coming in on them. And what what did you get for the handicap? I have one point eight six. It was about one point eight. It was about one point nine something like that. Okay. Uh, one point nine one, I think. Nice. That's so nice. yeah. Um, Again, it's a head versus heart thing, but um, I honestly, I have to believe that we'll get better and that we will do better with a new manager. So, new manager, manager says Martin is always fond of. Let's see if it happens. Okay. Uh, your second match, then, uh, Dan. Uh, fourth place, Fulham taking on eighth place, Sheffield United. Sheffield United, man, they've uh, kind of swapped roles, haven't they? Fulham had a bad start. Well, Sheffield United had a great start, but they've completely switched roles. It's like you, know down- you know what, you know what game it was that turned them around. Go on. Well, Fulham beat them five four at Bramall Lane. Yeah, that that was the that was the game that sparked Fulham's season to life, and it started a run of Sheffield United six games without a win. And was, I, I think Fulham could I think Fulham could go up as uh, automatic. You reckon they'll catch Cardiff? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, at the moment I, I really do. You look at how well they've played recently. Um, they're unbeaten since sixteenth of December in the Championship. So that's what eight thirteen games. They've won most of those. And the, the, look at the teams they've beaten. They've beaten Villa. They've beaten Wolves. They've beaten Derby County. Yeah. They've beaten the teams around them as well. Mm. You know, so, and they beat Cardiff as well away on Boxing Day. So, you know, they're, they're a really good side. One of the chief reasons for that is uh, Ryan Sessegnon. Sessegnon, yeah. Um, Martin said this, I think, either yesterday or Saturday, but I'm, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon. Ryan Sessegnon from the England team. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Yes, he's 17. I'll get him in, yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. He's 17, but he scored nine goals in ten games. Yeah. And he's like a left back. Yeah. Um, I think we've got a Gareth Bale type on our hands. He's not going to continue playing left back. He'll push it to left midfield, obviously, or, or even left forward. In that 5-4 win over Sheffield United, he scored a hat-trick. Um... He, he scores goals, he really does. But another player that's done really well for Fulham of late is Alexander Mitrovic. They signed on loan from uh, Newcastle. He scored at the weekend. He's, um, I think he's got three since he joined on loan now. Just going to check that. Um, give me two seconds. But, yeah, he's, um, I mean, he's moody. Don't get me wrong, he's a really moody guy. But Jokanovic is a countryman, and it was Jokanovic who, who tempted him to come to Fulham. It is three goals, I was right. Um, apparently, via Snapchat, um, <laughs> Mitrovic was on his way to Anderlecht. It <laughs> fell through, and Jokanovic was like, and he te- no, sent uh, Jokanovic a Snapchat saying, oh, I'm not going to Anderlecht, and Jokanovic said, well, do you want to come play for us? And, well, the rest is history, isn't it? So, Brilliant. Um, I'm a big fan. I know he's moody. 
I know he's a bit of an ass, but he scores goals. Yep. Uh, as he has proven, three in three games for Fulham. Yeah. Sheffield United, I'm a big, I, I do like Chris Wilder as a manager. I think he's done great things with them, but they have fallen away quite a bit of late. Um, they, they, they beat Reading at the weekend and they've won three in the last six. But you look at the, you look at their form from December onwards and it's just littered with defeats all over the show. You know, they, they like, uh, when they play teams at the top end, so the mob from BC, it's Wolverhampton. Wanderers, they've lost, lost away to Hull. This is a really tough game for them. You know, I, I, I can't see them getting anything from it. Um, I mean, yeah, okay, they did draw away to uh, Derby, but I don't know. Fulham are in such great form at the moment. Um, I'm all over them. And I, 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 I've got to be honest, if they keep playing the way they're playing, I, I quite want them to go. I, I, I'm not a big fan of Neil Warnock. I have to be honest with you. I really don't like him. So I'd rather he didn't go up. But um, if it was a choice between Cardiff and the mob from B6, well, then <laughs> <laughs> it's not even worth discussing. It's obvious. It. Um, Fulham are 1.89 to win this. And that is who I am backing. Good stuff. So, uh, Dan, there's a couple of Champions League matches. Liverpool-Porto, which looks like... Uh, Porto probably won't even show up. Then again, you never know. It's Champions League and can happen. PSG without Neymar. Is Mbappe is out as well, isn't he? Um, they think he is. They're not sure. Not and, sure. And then, of course, you have Man City taking on Basel. They're already through. And Spurs Juve. Well, Spurs Juve is the big one, isn't it? Um, it is. But I, okay, I wanted to quickly talk about PSG against Real Madrid because I wrote a preview for this on, um, Pro Tips this morning. Um, Pissy, yeah. Okay, so they're 3-1 down. They're, they're without Mbappe. Um, sorry, they're definitely without Neymar. Potentially without Mbappe. But they're playing Real Madrid at the right time. Um, you know, Zidane's under... Okay, so they've only lost once in the last nine games. But you know as well as I do, Zidane's under pressure. Mm. They're so far behind Barcelona, they're never going to catch them. So this is, this is their chance of glory now. This is the only thing they've got. And Madrid are not... Real Madrid are not that good away from home in the Champions League. They only kept one clean sheet in this year's competition away from home, which was against Apoel of uh, Cyprus. They had beaten 6-0. Their first clean sheet in nine games on the road. Um, PSG, on the other hand, um, 12 games spanning nearly three years since PSG last lost in the Champions League at home. And the last four games at the Parc des Princes, they've scored 14 times. Very, very dangerous to write them off. I'm not saying that um, they're going to, you know, it's going to be easy. Um, well, uh, PSG are favourites at about 2.00. Uh, Will they get two goals for the win to go through? I'm excited. I really am because Sorry, I'll be honest with you. Because yeah, it's all they need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they have no way goal. Yeah. Have yeah, I really want. Uh, I really want PSG to win. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. No, I would too. Yeah, yeah. As I mean, can you be neutral when you have petrol <coughs> money coming up against Real Madrid? Not really, but it'd be nice for them to put Madrid out and then get knocked out later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, and I'm going to be watching. Well, well, no, that's tomorrow night. I think Spurs and Juve uh, is the, Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be watching on Wednesday. Yeah, I think. Um, uh, look, you, you can never write off Juve. Juve 3.44. I'd say on the handicap. That'd be something, might be something we're taking. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you now because I, I haven't looked it up, but it's just, uh, I, I you can't, I, I think Spurs' biggest problem here is that they might go into this match a bit overconfident and you can't mm. rule out Juventus. They're one of the no, best in the world at what they do, you know? Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say on it though because I haven't, I haven't actually looked into the stats or anything like that on so like I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare give a tip. Uh, right, look, Dan, thanks then for the football. Uh, we'll be back to you uh, later on in the podcast with some baseball. As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast, or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. Okay then, so me now for a bit of tennis. Pro tips to Johnny is unavailable this week. Hopefully we'll have him back soon. Uh, there's a WTA and ATP Indian Wells event taking place in California this week. Now it starts today on the day of recording. There's a couple of matches have been played already, but uh, in the WTA, nothing in the men's yet. Um, so I can't really give you anything from either tournament other than the ladies' odds. You have an Angelique Kerber. She is uh, 7.5 to win. So, so Simona Halep is the same 
game, 7.5 to win overall. Then it's very uh, close. It, 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 it's very close anyway. Serena Williams, Petra Kvitova and Alina Svitolnia are all at 8. And then you have um, Garbine Murgorzova at 11. Uh, Caroline Wozniacki at 11. Caroline Pliskova at 14. And Maria Sharapova at 19. So it's all very close there. And... Um, Hard to pick a winner, probably uh, Halep and Kerber, uh, as you know, bookies are rarely wrong on these things, are probably uh, the likeliest to go uh, the furthest. Great to see Serena Williams back as well. Uh, I'm sure she'll get back to winning ways as well. But yeah, there's um, not really much to report from tennis. Uh, we should have more on, on Thursday though. So I'm NBA for you now then. So look, there's nothing. I mean, we record these on Mondays. There's no point in giving you the Monday night uh, games because most people don't don't get to hear this until Tuesday. But there's one from uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning uh, I'd like to take a look at. Uh, Oklahoma City Thunder are taking on the Houston Rockets. And the opening odds are quite interesting. Uh, 2.23 on the Oklahoma City Thunder and 1.57 on the Rockets. I think these are going to change a lot. I think the odds on the Thunder are for, I think the odds for the Thunder will drop considerably. And you know, if you're a trader, it's, uh, might be worth getting on early and getting on before the game starts. I say it'll drop, I say it'll drop a good bit, probably close to evens, uh, between uh, now and the next 24 hours or, or, or longer. And uh, let me give you some stats. So overall, Thunder have won uh, six out of the last ten. Uh, Houston Rockets have won ten out of the, out of the last ten. That's why their odds are so low. Uh, at home, uh, Thunder have won seven out of ten, and the Rockets have won nine uh, out of ten. The Rockets look they're on a great run. They've uh, 49 wins out of a possible 62, and they've been playing so well that they've uh, leapfrogged the Golden State Warriors into top position in their conference. Now the line. Uh, now the the spread line hasn't been set yet. The overs unders hasn't been spread yet. Hasn't been set yet either because it's just too early with this game being on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. I think it's at two a.m. my time, so it's one a.m. UK and Irish time. Let me give you some more uh, stats though. Uh, if you are going to look at the spread, um, Oklahoma City Thunder they've only beaten the spread in twelve out of thirty one home games, and Houston have beaten the spread in twenty out of thirty one. So it's definitely advantage Rockets there, and you know, totally one hundred percent expect uh, Houston Rockets to win. Uh, but betting, but you know, getting them one point five seven now, it's too low for me. I don't like those odds. Maybe in the accumulator with someone else who's close to those odds, but uh, no, nah, I, I wouldn't be taking it as a single bet anyway. Uh, but look, like I say, I expect the, the Oklahoma price to come down. So maybe uh, Houston's price will rise up and you'll be able to get something better. With the over-under line when it gets set, make sure and look at that as well because there's something interesting here. The Oklahoma City Thunder have only gone over in 14 out of 31 home games and Houston Rockets have only gone over in 11 out of 31. So take a look there. The bookies will obviously be aware of that but um yeah have a look at the line there and uh, see what you think of that when it comes out next up then we'll have pro tipster dan back with some baseball and after that we'll have uh, some ice hockey if you have any betting questions you'd like to ask don't be shy get in touch with patty martin or dan on twitter pro tipster irl pro tipster en or pro tipster dan or on facebook at pro tipster uk Back now, we have uh, Pro Tipster Dan, and he's going to tell us a bit about baseball. Dan, I know nothing, honestly. I, I, <laughs> this is a sport I know very, very little about. So, look, I know there's nothing. The league hasn't started yet. Uh, what's going um, on? Summer training, is that what they call it? Uh, yeah, spring training. Spring so, training. the league doesn't start for about another, uh, not to the end of this month. Uh, but all the camps are back now. All the uh, MLB camp, uh, teams are back, and they're in what's called spring training. So, they play games against each other. But um, they're not as strictly um, limited in what players they can use, in how many players they can change. Um, and what you get is like, so, for example... Uh, Dan, uh, Dan, can I jump in? It's, so is this an opportunity sometimes to see players in action, to scout players? Well, yeah, uh, there is a bit of that. Um, but what happens, major league teams have a, a, a normal roster of 25 players, an expanded roster of 40. So they'll have the whole 40 there. And they'll have what's called non-roster invitees, who are players that they, they haven't signed, but they want to take a look at. Mm-hmm. And it might be they'll give them a minor league contract. It might be that they'll, uh, one of these invitees will push out someone that they're not too sure about who's on their roster. It's an interesting time. Um, at the moment, it's very, very early days, so it's very hard to tell just how good a player is because 
you're up against double A pitchers who are not that great, who aren't as you know, who aren't as good as major league pitchers. You may be only getting like fastballs, not 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 any real difference. So if players are you know slugging home runs, it's not a big a deal yet. Um, a good example at San Francisco Giants, there's a guy called Kyle Yen, uh, Kyle Jensen who is s- smashing them. But he's, he's never been great in uh, the major league. I think he's only got 31 at bats. He, and he's never been that great at triple A. You know, he's just not good enough for um, major leagues. But he's always done it in spring training because the pressure's off. Whether it'll get him a minor league contract or something like that with the Giants, I don't know. But, um, it's interesting to see how, how people pick up on players. Because you can't bet on it, what I wanted to do is kind of, um, pick up on a couple that I've seen that I'm really impressed with. So, um, the big one was the, uh, the big sign of the summer was Shohei Otani, 23 year old Japanese pitch, oh well, 23 year old Japanese phenomenon. Because not only can he pitch a 100 mile an hour fastball, he can also smash a home run out of the park. Nice. Which is absolutely unheard of. Um, he signed for the Angels, um, he had his second start a couple of days ago, and I'm not kidding, it, it was just glorious. I, I, um, it was a B game, so there's no official box score. I saw some of the clips, and there's one curveball, and it's just filthy. It's just one of those things where you're like, how? How have you done that? And this guy can mash a ball 400 feet. It's it's going to be truly amazing. So every every baseball team was after him in the, in, in the winter. The Angels got him in the end. It's going to be interesting to see how they play him. Because pitchers don't generally, um, aren't generally meant to bat too much. Otani can also play as an outfielder. It's it's unheard of that he can you know he can do all this sort of stuff, and I'm intrigued to see how the Angels manager <coughs> kind of deals with it because I I think he'll like want to focus on one aspect which will probably be pitching, and he'll probably say look you know I'm not having you field um, like in the outfield or anything like that. I'm I'm not going to um, I'm not going to have you hit when you don't have to. But um, everyone's really excited about him. And it is really, really interesting. Uh, the other player I wanted to look at, um, anyone who's seen me on videos will see that I wear a, Gi- a San Francisco Giants hat because I'm a Giants fan. And um, we've had trouble in um, outfield the last couple of seasons. This year, we think we fixed it. We brought, we brought in a couple um, of players. We brought in uh, McCutcheon, who's a fantastic player. He's getting on a bit, but he's a fantastic player. We brought in Evan Longoria as well at third base. But we've brought through one of our own who looks like the real deal in centre field, Stephen Duggar. Um, in spring training so far, he's mashing the ball. And yeah, uh, you know, the caveat is that he's not up against great pitchers yet. Yes, he did take Kent Maeda, um, at the park, but <clears throat> Kent Maeda probably was only going about 80%, um, of his, of his ability for the uh, Dodgers in that game. It'll be interesting to see if Duggar nails, because he's not on the roster. If he nails down a roster place and at whose expense, I think he will. I think he's going to make the opening day roster. And I think that there's going to be some really, really important decisions that the Giants need to make. Last year, they had a really poor season. It was under 500. And, they've, you know, they're supposed to be like a team that's challenging for um, the, the division championship. They won the World Series three times in five years. Um, so, you know, they really do need to improve. And, like, this is the last few years of their golden generation. Yeah, so, just looking here, Dan, at, at the odds. So the odds for for the Giants to win their division, the National League West, that's not great. They're in their third favorite, but they're seven point two five with Bet three six five. The LA Dodgers yeah. are like way, way under. Well, the, the Dodgers are a stronger team. Yeah. Um, the bombs, as I like to call them, um, because as, as always, is is there is there is, there, is, is it like uh, is it like American football? Is there a wild card as well in this? Yeah, there is. There is. There's wild cards. Um, so it's the division, uh, the division winners, each of the division winners, and then two wild cards in yeah. each of the, uh, so one in the, uh, American League, one in the National League, uh, sorry, two in the American League, two in the National League. Okay. Um, but it's a long season, 162 games. Ugh. And, and the thing is, it's great for, um, it's great for betting because there's games every night. Mm. <clears throat> so, you know, there's always more to bet on. And because of those games every night, the, um, the starting pitchers rotate. Obviously, different uh, grounds, and there's always a new variable to look at when when putting your money on. So, looking forward to the new season. How, how, um, does, how does stuff like how does the handicap betting work on it, Dan? 
So um, handicap betting, it's the same as in, in ice hockey, I guess, in that it's like it's the spread. Okay. So it's how many, how many runs a team wins by. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Most most uh, baseball games are actually quite low scoring, so so you can have over under like total runs, and then the spread would be um, one team to win by three and a half runs, one team to you know not okay. not lose by two and a half. Okay. Um, pretty low. I would, yeah, they're, they're generally quite low. I, I would, I'm going to be honest with you. I would be, um, I would need to do a lot more research before betting on spreads because I just don't know enough. Uh, you, um, baseball is um, a sport that's run by statistics. Um, there's actually a branch of statistics solely for baseball called sabermetrics. Oh, <laughs> um, I'm not kidding. They, these guys take autism to new levels. <laughs> <laughs> and they, if you're into that sort of thing, and I've got to admit I am, then it's great because, you know, you can pay through the statistics and you can look at hitters versus pitchers and, you can kind of work out where you think the game should go, but it's really, it's one of those sports where if you want to make a consistent profit, you really do need to do a lot of research. Mm. But I think if you're good at research, um, and you're good at keeping an eye on things, then handicapping is the way, you know, you could probably make money out of handicapping in baseball. Mm. Just like you can in basketball and yeah. in ice hockey. Exactly, yeah. Alright, Dan. Um, uh, at Nels then before we go. Happy enough. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Right then, Sir Pro Tips are done. Please tell us then where people can find you on the internet. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Pro Tips are done, or on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Pro Tips are done, all one word. Um, where you'll find me most these days though, is if you look on Pro Tips are done slash betting dash news, you'll see our, our content, our previews, and I write a lot of these. Yep. So. Read what we have to say about matches coming up, uh, team statistics, analysis, all that sort of stuff. Um, well, we've got most Champions League done. We'll have all the Europa League games up by tomorrow. So, yeah, if you need some help with your betting, that's the place to go. Yeah, get over there because we're putting up between 30 and 40 uh, articles every week, and that's <coughs> what it's going to be for the next foreseeable future anyway. So uh, thanks, Dan, for joining me, and I'll speak to you soon, man. See you later, Paddy. So I'm back again with some uh, ice hockey. Now, it being Monday, like like with the NBA, with the basketball, um, I'm not going to give you the, any uh, matches for Monday night. There's no point. A lot of people who listen to this uh, don't get it. Don't get it until Tuesday morning for their commute. So there's no point in giving you games that uh, have already been tipped. Um, so there's a couple of big ones in the NHL. We had the Boston Bruins are taking on the Red Wings, Detroit Red Wings. I'm sure if you're sick of me talking about the Boston Bruins. <laughs> I used to back them a lot on our um, group videos as well over on Facebook. Yeah, I'll give you the odds on this. Uh, the Bruins 1.8 to win, draw 4.13, and Red Wings 3.69. Those odds, obviously, with the draw there, are just uh, counting uh, three periods. So if you want to back uh, the Bruins to win, including overtime, you can get them at about 1.5, around that. And the Red Wings, they are around 2.6. Over 5.5 goals is a pretty decent price. It's uh, 1.97. Uh, for over 1.81 for under, um, you know, t- a few weeks earlier, that definitely would have favoured uh, overs. Um, it, it, I mean, what I mean is the odds would have been the other way around. But of late, um, Boston's games haven't been going over because they've had a bit of a stumble. Um, and I said they would when they were bringing in new players, especially uh, attacker Rick Nash. Uh, formerly of the New York Rangers, but um, it took him a couple of games to settle in. But it looks like he's he's fitted in very well now, and they are back to winning winning ways after a stumble there. I think the last three in a row. Yeah, they're uh, they're six points ahead behind now in the Eastern Conference behind leaders Tampa Bay Lightning now, and they have uh, 40 out of 63 wins at home, 22 out of 33 wins. So they'd want to keep the pressure on here, and it looks like Nash is definitely uh, chomping at the bit to get on the scoreboard a lot. They uh, they, they look they look pretty good with him I gotta say they didn't uh, when he came into the team first there just after he was um, transferred uh, from the Rangers uh, it, it, they were looking well out of shape uh, it looked like it wasn't working at all but they've really worked on their game and they're doing well the Bruins they've won 4 to 5 at home and 8 out of 10 the Red Wings they've lost the last 3 in a row and they're on the on the road and they're way down in 14 probably just looking forward to the season ending so they can regroup uh, and get started and looking forward to next season and um 
yeah, from here on in, just just blood the, the new players that they got in the transfer window there. Uh, but you know, there's a good rivalry between these two teams, it's Boston versus Detroit. And you know, the Bruins, like along with Tampa Bay uh, Lightning and the Las Vegas Golden Knights, these are the teams that everyone wants to win against, and they really raise their game for. So I'm expecting something pretty good here. I'm going to stay up and watch this uh, for sure. A good few people over on the Pro Tips or website, they are tipping the Bruins to win here. The highest uh, ranked tip comes from a user called Eric01. So yeah, the tip then is for uh, Bruins to win at 1.8. But uh, yeah, if, if you prefer to have a look at the overs unders, make sure and have a look at the stats as well. There's a good there's a good website I use called uh, Vegas Insiders. <clears throat> if you just Google search Vegas Insiders NHL against the spreads, you'll see there. Yeah, if over if overs and unders is something that you prefer uh, betting on. Uh, what did I say the price is so over is 1.97 under 1.81 and I suppose uh, it's probably leaning towards under because uh, when playing at home the Bruins have only gone uh, overs in 15 out of 33 and the Detroit Red Wings they have only gone over in 12 out of 32 so unders uh, would look like uh, what, it should, what should happen here um, based on those stats but you know uh, like I say um, all of these teams they really raise their games against the Bruins and the Bruins have home advantage so oh, I'm kind of leaning towards over if I'm honest but um, I, I think the safer bet here is for the Bruins to win and uh, there's another match there's another tip that I saw on the Pro Tipster website as well from uh, a user and it's the New Jersey Devils to win they're playing against the Montreal Canadiens and the Canadiens they hate traveling they're terrible away from Canada away from uh, Montreal uh, they absolutely hate traveling. Uh, they've only won nine out of 31 games away from home. They've only scored 31, which is the lowest of the Eastern Conference. And the Devils, they are, they're not assured their, um, playoff spot yet. They are fourth in their division. They're on a uh, 74 points of three ahead of the Columbus Blue Jays, who are only two points ahead of the Carolina Hurricanes. So it's still, um, still a lot to play for there. They're going to want to get as many wins on the board, obviously, uh, to try and secure uh, their playoff spot. They're only four points behind the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Philadelphia Flyers are just one point ahead of them. So it's very tight there in the Metropolitan Division. And, um, yeah, they're, they're going to want to get up a little bit higher just to make sure that they have their uh, playoff spot. So the tip then is from a pro tipster uh, user called Hooj Dunk. H-O-O-J Dunk. Thanks, man, for uh, joining and sharing your tip. You can get his tip is for the New Jersey Devils to win at 1.75. That is including overtime. If you're feeling a bit, if you're feeling a bit braver, you can get them to win without overtime at 2.15. So that's it then from me, pro tipster Paddy. Paddy Murphy, I suppose. You can call me, or some people call me Spud. I don't mind. You can call me at as long as it's not too early in the morning. But I'm oh god that's sorry I'm sorry that's such an awful joke it's so bad I'm actually gonna I'll just leave it in the edit <laughs> I, I'm, I'm ashamed of that one look if you want to get in touch you can get us uh, Pro Tipster Pod on Twitter uh, you can also find me uh, Spudcast on Twitter as well Pro Tipster Paddy on Facebook and I suppose the handiest way of getting in touch with us all is uh, just going to our Facebook page uh, Pro Tipster UK over on Facebook it's either myself Dan or Martin are usually looking after that so you can get in touch with us and ask us any betting questions you have uh, make sure and check out our new news section on our website as well where we're putting up between 30 and 40 uh, betting articles every week as well so there's some great tips and info and stats in those as well so look that that's it um enjoy whatever sports you're going to be watching over the next few days we hope you make a few bob as well and sure yeah speak to you on thursday good luck thanks for listening everybody don't forget to check out protipster.com where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipster Global. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipster E-N or ProTipster I-R-L. Bye.